We begin our worship this evening with our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the keeper of the covenant, the source of steadfast love, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. God hears us when we cry and draws us close in Jesus Christ. Let us return to the one who is full of compassion. I invite you into this moment of silent reflection. Fountain of living water. Pour out your mercy over us. Our sin is heavy and we long to be free. Rebuild what we have ruined and mend what we have torn. Wash us in your cleansing flood. Make us alive in the spirit to follow in the way of Jesus. As healers and restorers of the world you so love. Amen. Beloved, God's word never fails. The promised rests on grace by the saving love of Jesus Christ, the wisdom and power of God. Your sins are forgiven. And God remembers them no more. Journey in the way of Jesus. Amen. We invite you to join in singing our opening hymn. Change my heart, O oh God, make it ever true. Change my heart, O oh God, may I be like you. You are the potter, I am the clay. Change my heart, O oh God, make it ever true. Change my heart, O oh God, may I be like you. Let us pray. Holy God, through your Son, you have called us to live faithfully and act courageously. Keep us steadfast in your covenant of grace and teach us the wisdom that comes only through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from 1 Corinthians, the first chapter. Listen for the word of the Lord. The message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to those, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and the discernment of the discerning I will thwart. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world did not know God through wisdom. God decided through the foolishness of our proclamation to save those who believe. For Jews demand signs and Greeks desire wisdom. But we proclaim Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. But to those who are the called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. For God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom, and God's weakness is stronger than human strength. Word of God, 
word of life. Thanks be to God. Okay, this is a challenging, but I know you're up for it, challenge children's message. So I want to invite and encourage you to consider um, in each of these pictures, it's kind of like something you could learn. A class in and add it to the chat. I'll help you out, right? Like obviously there's the word history. I couldn't figure out what exactly would be a symbol for history, but maybe you can see what some of those classes might be. We're talking all season of Lent about being um, C students. These don't all begin with C, but they all represent different kinds of classes. Yes, a dance class is perfect. Thanks for that. Yep, guitar class, a music class. Keep looking. I wanna highlight for you that there are actually, yep, science class, yep. A cooking class. There's two books. One um, next to the E equals MC squared. And what kind of class would that be? E equals MC squared. Um, the one with the reading it could be a reading class or English, yes. But E equals MC squared, what kind of class would that be? I don't actually know the answer. I'm thinking it's physics. We all have our own strengths. We've got geography. But then you can see down below that person is actually holding a Bible. A Bible class is something um, we're super passionate about in our tradition. Um, maybe you can see um, on the canvases, that's one of those adults are also learning. They're painting on the canvases. Um, I want to highlight for you, look at the yellow little car, because maybe some of you are familiar and you've taken driver's ed. Yep, exactly. I see that. There's penmanship, um, a lost art at time. Acting can be a great class. Gardening can be a cl great class. Math, there's so many ways to learn. The kids with the parachute is like a PE class. There are so many ways we get to learn. And in this season of Lent, the invitation for all of us is to keep learning and um, growing, and that's a funny comment. Someone said they thought penmanship was also known as detention. And I don't think they always teach handwriting now. Um, I didn't do well in that class if you've ever received a note from me. But there's so many different ways to learn and grow. And part of what you might notice in many of these, it's happening in groups. We learn from one another. So um, all of us, young and old alike, I want to um, invite and encourage you to consider, is there something new you'd like to learn? Or maybe something that you know that you'd like to share? This is um, a season of growth um, here in Colorado. We've had this beautiful spring day, and maybe you remember that the word Lent, that's what Lent means is spring. And things are starting to grow. Our bushes around the, um, we have, you know, some of those kind of decorative grasses, they got a haircut. So we know spring is coming. So I hope you hear a word of encouragement in all sorts of topics, in all sorts of ways about how we're invited to grow on this journey of being a C student. And in the sermon, I'm going to share a couple stories from my own learning because it's kind of a crash course we're on. I invite you to take your hands, um, whatever your age or stage in life, fold them together, bring them close to your heart, and repeat after me as we pray. Dear God. Dear God. Help us keep learning. Help us keep learning. Help us keep growing. Help us keep growing. And when we're challenged. And when we're challenged. Teach us how. Teach us how ask for help to ask for help in jesus name we pray in jesus name we pray amen amen in this um c student um season our change for change offering um one of the recipients will be a c related local organization 
clothes to kids. So we're going to share with you now a video of the work that they do. And we are just putting together, we put out a notice today that we are going to be doing a shoe drive for clothes to kids. You can find details um, in your email or on um, our website. So we're going to focus on shoes. We're going to invite you to bring um, new or gently used children's sized shoes from about 11, um, children's size 11 um, to adult size 17. There's a big range, but there's especially a need from like that 11 to five um, size. And we're going to do it on Palm Sunday, a parade walking shoes. So that ha happens at the end of this month. We're going to have a drop off for the shoes. So we invite you to enjoy this video. More than 200,000 students in the Denver area are from low-income families. With so many families struggling, it is easy to see why there is often not enough money to purchase clothing appropriate for school. Inadequate clothing can create an uncomfortable distinction among peers that can result in poor self-esteem and lower academic performance. Close to Kids of Denver addresses this problem by providing new and quality used clothing in a boutique setting to students in need. Kids get to shop for themselves free of charge. Close to Kids provides full wardrobes to students enrolled in preschool through high school and even serves young adults who are working on a GED up to age 21. Made the phone call, got the appointment, headed down and it was a completely new world. I didn't know it was going to be current fashion. It was shocking. Really, someone greeted us, brought us back, and kind of gave us the rundown of, of what your package entails. So once we got the basics down, and the girls understood that they could choose anything in here that was their size, it, it literally was like I said, you guys just got a shopping spree, go. The kids had a blast. The ladies with them had a blast. We were in here laughing, we were telling stories. It was a fashion show lineup for, I'd say at least, and I'm not kidding, 45 minutes. It was, it was adorable. It was cool to see them that happy. I really like it. That actually is That's so cute. cute. I think this would be good to school. Let me see the back. Oh yeah, that's adorable. That really pretty color right? on you, Zoe. With your skin tone, that, that really color. Zoe, why me? Wow! You look so good. It fits so You look so handsome. Like it? You look in the mirror. And I honestly feel like self confidence is going to be boosted for my oldest, who's going into eighth grade. Um, middle school for girls is terrifying. Actually, that's my interpretation. It's terrifying. For them, it's challenging. And how you look, unfortunately, is still a big thing in middle school. So for her, I think it's going to be some boost to her self-esteem, for sure. My other little girl, she kind of runs the world. She'll just feel, as she would put it, she'll feel fly or cool in her new gear. But Riley's steady Eddie. She'll, she'll just feel attractive in herself already. Little Noah, he actually enjoyed shopping and picking out stuff. His big sister taught him. So he just likes having new stuff to put on. As long as it's Bob the Builder or something cool, cute like that. They love it. No, if you don't want to get bullied, yeah, style would be important for kids. Because you don't want to be like made fun of and like sometimes like kids really young or like get really insecure about what people think a lot. With these clothes, we don't really have to worry about it. We can sort of just wear the clothes because we know they're, they're cute. We can just walk to school without having to worry about being bullied. The feeling that I had when I was trying on these clothes was like really happy and there was like a, like a really happy energy in the room the whole time we were here. Like there was not really a dull moment. We're really excited to start school and we don't feel like, I feel really happy to like wear these clothes and I'm like excited to look like different and I haven't really had clothes like that for a while because we're just wearing the same thing and we don't go shopping as much as we would like to. So when you're like wearing the clothes you can think about like 
just like friends and like what you're gonna eat for lunch and like trying to raise your grades instead of constantly thinking about like your outfits all the time. You feel as the parent that you're still providing for your kids. I don't feel like I'm a mom not trying hard enough. I don't feel like I've missed something. I feel like I found an opportunity for help. I don't feel like my hand's being smacked or I'm being treated in a derogatory manner. I really feel like I'm with people that one, want to do this, and two, get how the kids feel. And through that, I feel like I'm being supported as a parent. Close to Kids of Denver is currently serving more than 10,000 students each year. Close to Kids strives to be a responsible shepherd of all gifts, whether they are contributions of time, clothing, or money. The dignity of being ready to go is priceless. Close to Kids also has an opportunity for those of you who have the um, desire and the availability um, to um, volunteer in person. Um, they've changed some of their protocols, but they're still providing Close to Kids even in um, this time of, for some remote learning, um, um, it's mostly towards the end of the week. And as I said, on Palm Sunday, we'll be having a shoe drive. So you'll hear more about Close to Kids as well. Now I invite you to hear the Holy Gospel according to John, the second chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. The Passover of the Jews was near, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple, he found people selling cattle, sheep, and doves, and the money changers seated at their tables. Making a whip of cords, he drove all of them out of the temple, both the sheep and the cattle, he also poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. He told those who were selling the doves, take these things out of here. Stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples remembered that it was written, zeal for your house will consume me. The Jews then said to him, what sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered them, destroy this temple and in three days, I will raise it up. The Jews then said, this temple has been under construction for 46 years, and will you raise it up in three days? But he was speaking of the temple of his body. After he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they believed the scripture and the word that Jesus had spoken. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please pray with me. May your spirit surround us. Open our ears, our hearts, our minds, our lives, so that we would hear the word you have for us that we would learn something new, something to take with us this week, a way that you're calling us in this journey of following Jesus to be your beloved disciples as well. We ask all of this in the name of the risen Lord, Jesus Christ. Amen. Sometimes I don't think we really understand things while they're happening. But I want to tell you a story of the days that I went to Minnesota, round two. I'd gone to St. Olaf College. So we have a couple of our students who in the congregation are deciding on schools. Um, they're filling out the applications. All I really knew is I wanted to be away from home and I wanted to have a trunk. Let's just say St. Olaf wasn't a good match for me for lots of other reasons. But I got a redo. I went back to St. Paul, Minnesota when I went to the seminary. And since I hadn't taken any Greek in college as an undergraduate, before I started the seminary, I wanted to get all the Greek done. So I did summer Greek. Maybe you're familiar with the expression uh, crash course. Two full semesters of Greek put into, I think it was, 
an eight week summer session. It was a lot of learning. It was way um, intense at many, at many times. But I thought about that whole idea of a crash course as we meet Jesus at the beginning of John's gospel, turning over tables, crashing things. In the verses just before where we are now in John's gospel, the first sign was given at the wedding in Cana. Jesus turns water into wine with intention and purpose. Jesus is showing up as the son of God, both fully human and fully divine. And now in this moment, what is there for us to learn? Maybe it's a crash course of sorts. Maybe you know some of these things already, or this story is familiar because you could picture it. But what's at the heart of this story? It's in Luke's gospel that we hear of Jesus as a 12-year-old also at the temple. We estimate his age at this time in his ministry to be about 30. Lots of years have passed. I wonder if any of you have had the experience that I have. I got the opportunity to return to my childhood home a couple decades after I had moved away. It didn't really just seem the same. Things seemed so much smaller. Maybe it's because I was so much littler at the time. There's been some time since Jesus maybe has been at the temple in this way. And the anger that we hear, this zeal for his father's house, which he had early also as a 12 year old telling his parents, wouldn't you expect to find me here in my father's house? Jesus is both a student and a teacher Even as a young boy, he knew things about scripture, fully human, fully divine. And now he's moved from the wedding in Cana to now a time where he's outraged. This isn't the purpose, the intent that God has for the temple not to make it in a place where people are ranked or valued because of what they can sacrifice, but it's a place of worship. If you look for pictures of the temple now, it was destroyed about the time that John's gospel was written. It's in ruins. All that's left is the Western wall, which is also known as the Wailing Wall, and even in current pictures, you can see that courtyards have been created out in front of that Wailing Wall. You see, sometimes part of the learning is to get to the main point. The place of worship wasn't to prove their righteousness or needing to earn God's love, but to come and experience it. Jesus starts out his ministry expressing deep feelings, sharing with his disciples how he's going to show up in the world, fully human and fully divine. He'll say things that at the time they won't understand, but later will come back to them. After those eight weeks of studying Greek, I took a New Testament class, so I used the Greek. I took other classes in particular books of the New Testament or letters and also used the Greek. I'm now 30 something years away from that intense crash course in Greek. But I'm so grateful for what I learned in a very intense time period because I still had the skills or I still have the skills to go back and look at some of those words and try to understand what were the words that were used in Jesus's time and how do we translate from Greek to English? This past year of COVID, a pandemic, has been a crash course in a lot of topics. Grief, challenge, change. We've all experienced a wide range of emotions. And I hope that you know that in whatever feeling you had or have, 
God is with you. And part of our learning that I think Jesus was showing and teaching his disciples also was his ability to show up in all sorts of parts of life, in the great joys of a wedding, in the grief and the frustration and the anger of his father's house being made into, as the other gospel writers say, a den of thieves. On Friday, as we remembered the one-year anniversary here in Colorado of the first COVID case being identified, I found myself feeling some of the deep sorrow for those who've lost loved ones and haven't been able to grieve them in the way that we've been used to. I had coffee that day with my brother-in-law who had COVID in September and is still feeling some of the effects, even though he's a relatively young man. God is with us in these times. Part of the learning that a really super challenging, more than most of us ever thought, a topic we would never have chosen to learn about year, the crash course of COVID has the potential to increase in us a connection with God, to trust God to be with us, to learn how we can be connected to one another, even in challenging and difficult times. So I'd like to give you some homework. It's part of what happens when we're students. I'd like you to take paper to pen, and it doesn't have to be penmanship. I don't want it to be like detention for anyone. But even in the midst of a really hard year, just a handful, if you would write for yourself, Write it down, five things that you've learned in this past year. And then another five of how even as difficult this year has been, five things for which you're grateful. 10, like the 10 commandments, which was our first reading, we didn't read it. Five things you've learned, five things for which you're grateful. And if you want to share those with me or someone else, you never know, or maybe part of our learning, being students, is we're also invited and called to be teachers, to share what we know. We get to share our experiences, we get to share our strengths, but we also share our weaknesses. As Paul wrote to the church in Corinth, so many times it's upside down and what the world might think to be foolish that God can use for God's purposes. Five things you've learned. Five things for which you're grateful. Two handfuls. Paper to pen. Students willing to learn. Even sometimes when it's a crash course. So one final story. There was a little yellow car from a driver's training. That was one of the jobs I also had. I wasn't one of the people teaching anyone how to drive. I don't think I would have been good at that. I'm a little too, <gasps> when people are driving. But I worked at the office of Teen Auto Club. I worked there for a little over a year during college. And I was the one who showed students those terrible videos they show in driver's ed of big crashes. It was kind of a fear factor learning. I don't know that it was always effective, but it definitely generated conversation. But one of the things that I learned just working in the office at Teen Auto Club with driver's education was the power of patience. Boy, oh boy. Those driving instructors were incredibly patient people. And I learned from them. I watched them, I listened to them, and I learned some things that to this day, I remind myself that even sometimes when it's overwhelming and they tell some overwhelming stories of being in cars with students who are learning to drive, take the deep breath. So I invite you into that as well. So maybe that's your other homework assignment. So along with your Five things you've learned. Five things for which you're grateful. <sighs> Maybe we'll practice together. Finding the calm in a deep breath. Amen. 
we invite you to join in singing our hymn of the day. My soul cries out with a joyful shout that the God of my heart is great, and my spirit sings of the wondrous things that you bring to the ones who wait. You fix your sight on your servant's plight, and my weakness you From east to west shall my name be blessed, could the world be about to turn. My heart shall sing of the day you bring, let the fires of your justice burn. Wipe away all tears, for the dawn draws near, and the world is about to turn. Relying on the promises of God, we pray boldly for the church, the world, and all in need. There is no God before you. Purify the faith of your church, that your people place their trust in nothing beside you. Your name is holy. 
guide your church, that in every situation, your people's words and actions honor your name. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. The heavens declare your glory. Renew your creation. Provide leaders in the struggle for clean air and water. Protect creatures and crops that rely on healthy ecosystems. Give all people the willingness to repent when our way of life pollutes the earth and skies. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Your foolishness is wiser than human wisdom. Fill leaders with the foolishness of your peace and mercy. Your law defends the vulnerable. Work through legislators, judicial systems, and systems of law enforcement to protect the well being and freedom of all. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Your weakness is stronger than human strength. Protect those who are vulnerable and give courage to all who are suffering or in need. Today we lift up before you, Sudi and baby Jack, Mary Stagmuller, the Robke family, Shirley, Gwen, Alan, Ron and Christina Marquez, the Maxwell family, Arlene and Ron, the Unawa family, Stephen Braun and family, Ashley, Marlene Olson, Chuck Grote, Andrew Ike, Jan Nupp, Linda Krabenhoff, Julie Dionys, Ginger Vlasic, Mindy Brune, Romeo White, Les and Carrie, Gary and Kay Schritter, Eric, Brenna and Goose, Barry Amon, Kathy Mulqueen and family, Lisa, Tracy, Randy Fluger, Brian Fluger, Heather Harrington, Marcia O'Brien and family, Michael Bax and Teresa Quick and their families, Jeanette and Ed Martin. For these and those we now name are holding the silence of our hearts. Today, we also lift up all those who have died from COVID-19 and their families and friends who continue to grieve. Defend victims of crime and bring redemption to those who have harmed others. Give Sabbath rest to all those who labor. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. You call us to proclaim Christ crucified Give clarity to this congregation and our leaders so that we might follow Christ beyond our own habits and comfort. Clear out anything in our common life that would obscure the gospel or that serves our own interests. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We entrust ourselves and all our prayers to you, O faithful God, praying through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you.
Please pray with me. Faithful God, you walk beside us in desert places and you meet us in our hunger with bread from heaven. Accompany us in this meal that we may pass over from death to life with Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. We join together in praying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We invite you to join in singing our closing hymn. Send me, Lord, send me, Jesus, send me, Jesus, send me, Jesus, send me, lead me, Lord, lead me, Jesus, lead me, Jesus, lead me, Jesus, lead me, fill me, Lord, fill me, Jesus, fill me, Jesus, fill me, Jesus, fill me. Receive these words to walk with you this week. You are what God made you to be, created in Christ Jesus for good works, chosen as holy and beloved, freed to serve your neighbor. God bless you, that you may be a blessing in the name of the holy and life-giving Trinity. Amen. We'd like to highlight some announcements. Tomorrow at 2 p.m., we have both Sunday School and Confirmation in Zoom. The registration links are open for Easter services. Um, coming up in not so many weeks, um, there's two indoors um, that will take place here at the church at 8 and 10 a.m., one outdoors here at the church at 1130, and then for sure Zoom Easter here at 9 o'clock online all Holy Week. There will be different opportunities to explore and experience um, the beauty of entering into this sacred time and all the evenings, Monday through um, Friday on uh, during Holy Week, we will have a 7 p.m. Zoom and join us this coming Wednesday at 7 for holding evening prayer for Lent. Jesus wanted his followers to be united and to remember that his love would be with them always. And so it was on the night in which he was betrayed that our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks and he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. This is the body of Christ, the bread of heaven given for you. Take and eat. And again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and he blessed it. And he gave it for all to drink saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood given and shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. This is the blood of Christ, the cup of salvation shed for you, take and drink. And now, may the very body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Go in peace to love, serve, and grow. Thanks be to God, and we will.